After Effects for compositing and Premiere Pro for editing your videos. Two amazing tools for your post-production workflow. But two programs? What's the best workflow here to go back and forward between these two? Hey folks, Jordi here for Cinecom.net. Welcome to the Creative Videography channel. Now you might have already heard about it, Dynamic Link. It's this thing that almost any Adobe application has and it allows their different programs to communicate with each other. So let's head over to the computer and see how this thing works, but most importantly find a workflow that is fast and user friendly. We are inside Adobe Premiere Pro and what you're seeing here are just some random shots as a demo for this tutorial. It's just me sitting down on a chair and suddenly I see this uh, letter laying down. But it seems to be a bill, so that's why this expression over here. As you can see, I'm not in the mood to pay that bill. Anyways, we want to bring this into After Effects because we want to do some visual effects, perhaps lower the price of that bill or something, or add some animations to it. So we're going to talk about the workflow of working with clips from and to After Effects. There are basically two ways we can do that. We can either bring the stuff from Premiere into After Effects or bring the stuff from After Effects to Premiere. I'm going to start with showing you the first one, bringing the sequence, the entire timeline of Premiere Pro to After Effects. And we're going to take a look at the benefits of that first. So right here, I'm inside After Effects, just an empty project. I'm going to close the beginning screen here and I'm going to open up or locate the project file of Premiere Pro that we were seeing in the beginning. And I'm going to drag that project file just inside After Effects, just like so. And that will make a connection with Dynamic Link, the stuff that I was talking about in the beginning of this video. From there, you can select the sequence that you want to import in here, and that's just video one. Press OK, and it's imported as one single clip. I can drag that into the timeline here to create a new composition and play that video back. Now, the great thing here is that we didn't have to export this from uh, Premiere Pro and import it back inside After Effects. Now we've actually made a link between these two. And let me just show you quickly the benefits of doing that. Let's say that this shot right here, I would like to color correct. To do that very easily, I can just go back to Premiere Pro, stand in that clip, and I'm going to change my workspace to color, to change the color correction. I'm just going to do something uh, drastic in here. Let's just add some more warmth into this shot so that you can actually see it happening. And I'm just going to tap back to After Effects and look what happens. Bang. Also, the clip in there has been adjusted. So there you can see the link working. Now, this is all good if you have an edit lock as well. And that is not really a technical term. It's just something that you have to mind yourself on. Once you're done with your edits that you're going to say to yourself, it's locked right now. And I'm not going to change anything anymore in my edits. Because if I'm going to go back to Premiere Pro and I'm going to move that clip here to a different spot, we had this black hole and that is also visible inside After Effects, as you can see. So that means if I'm going to do something with this particular shot, I'm going to animate a miniature car driving on this table, for example. Well, when I'm going to drag that clip to a different spot in Premiere, well, then that car will just drive on top of a black video like we have right here. Also, we don't really see the individual clips in here. So that's also something that you have to be aware of. So why would this be good? Well, if you are doing some general stuff, for example, you're just going to track some text in here making some very basic animations, just anything where you're not really going to blend or cut or do anything individually with these clips. Then this right here is a pretty good workflow, definitely because you can always go back to Premiere and do other changes like the color corrections. But there's also, of course, another workflow, which is more popular, and that is by sending specific clips to After Effects. What I'm going to do is close After Effects, and I'm not going to save this project. We're going to start from a blank page. I'm going to undo this action here as well. Now what we can do is select one or multiple clips in here and send them to After Effects. So for the example, I'm just going to select two, right click on them and say replace with After Effects composition. When you click on that, After Effects will open up and it will ask you to save the project file, which is something that you have to do prior. Let's just name this anything, for example, After Effects, and press on Save. And as you can see, the two clips has been imported, plus a composition has been created. And we can now work individually on these clips. You can see the actual length of that clip, which is also more convenient. And if we are going to take a look back inside Premiere, we'll see that these two clips have been changed by that one composition that we had. Also here in the project panel, you can see that that composition has been imported. So yes, that does also mean that we can drag in After Effects project files right inside Premiere, just like we were doing in the beginning of this screencast. Now the benefit of this is that we can of course move this composition around in a timeline. 
We can do other things like slicing that clip again, doing color corrections on it, perhaps we're going to blend some lens flares onto it. So we still have a lot of freedom, we're kind of using Premiere as the main editing place here, where everything happens, where everything comes together. And After Effects is just one input source. Now let's go back to After Effects and do something here. Let's say that we want to add some pretty cool effects. Let me just head over to the effects and presets and I'm just going to drag some stuff onto it. Don't mind it too much. For example, this blob eyes. What else do we have? Lens. Smear looks pretty cool as well. Make sure that we still see something in here. <laughs> something like that. Just smearing that out. Radius a little bigger. There we go. Isn't this a pretty awesome, pretty cool effect? Now this plays back pretty okay inside After Effects, you know, the performance is pretty okay, but if we are going to go back to Premiere, with having this dynamic link in action, the performance has been decreased a lot, and that is one of the limitations of dynamic link. I am able to play this back, but as you can see, it doesn't go that smoothly, even though it was going smoothly in After Effects. And that is one ugly face right there. But there is a pretty good solution for that. But that's for after this short break. Discover Premium Beats' library of high-quality, royalty-free music and enhance your video with the work of professional composers. With an array of styles and genres available, it's easy to find your ideal track fast. Plus, you can download free full-length previews before purchasing to make sure that your track suits your project perfectly. Check out the link in the description below to get listening. Welcome back, folks. Now we can just render this clip by hitting the return key. And now as you can see, this little line here on top has turned green, which means we can play that back real time because it's rendered. But let's assume that we are going to do the color corrections now onto it inside Premiere. That means I'm going to make changes to a clip that I've rendered. Let me just do that. I'm going to decrease the exposure and already you see that that line has turned red again because it's not the same anymore as its source file. So that means Premiere is telling me, well, you made changes to it, you'll have to re-render this. And that is an issue. This is not really user-friendly. This is not a good workflow. It still plays back awful right now. Now, luckily, Premiere came up with a pretty good solution for this. What we can do is render this, but also replace this clip with the rendered file. And that is easily done by the functionality by just right-clicking on this composition here and click on Render and Replace. That will prompt you how you would like to render that. And what we're going to do is make sure that the source is always on individual clips because that will make sure that each clip is separately rendered. Always gives you more flexibility when you're going to move stuff around. The format DNX HD is pretty good as well. I'm not going to go too deep in all of this. Basically, what you want to do is just hit that OK button and that will just render that clip. And as you can see inside the project panel, also that rendered file has been added to it. It has been replaced with the composition, but the composition is still there. Also something important and also something that we're going to come back in just a minute. The great thing is that we can do color corrections onto it right now. And we're doing that not on the composition, but we're doing that directly on that render file. So that's why we can always play this back in real time while making changes to it. And that face really keeps creeping me out, seriously. I'm going to go back to After Effects and remove that effect because I don't feel good anymore. Just remove all of this here. Let's add something better to this. For example, the Liquify, which is also a pretty cool effect. We can just take stuff and smear that to different spots like that. Not that my face looks better now. I still feel creeped out. Anyways, let's go back to Premiere Pro. And as you can see, nothing has changed in here. So that is a little problem that we have. So what we have to do here is make sure that we have an After Effects lock in our mind as well. That means we have done our visual effects. We're not going to make changes to it anymore. And that's also the reason why we can render it inside Premiere. Let's assume that you are making changes because you don't like your face in this shot. Then we have to bring the composition back in this place here. But that's luckily done very easily. What we can do is just double click here on the composition. So that means the actual source inside the program monitor. And as you can see here, this is the thing that we've changed now with the smear. And since we have that in the source monitor open now, we can right click on that render file and say replace with clip from source monitor. And bang, everything is back. And also our color correction is still on that clip, which is very important, of course. And now we can re-render that again. So this is one great workflow to make sure that everything stays at speed in your timeline in Premiere Pro. There's one last thing that I'll show you guys, and that is if you are working with text. Let's say that you have made a text animation. Well, there's also there a pretty cool workflow. Let's send a different clip to After Effects, this one right here with the awesome expression. Right click onto it, say replace with After Effects composition that will open that up in the same project that I had in After Effects right here. So we don't have to create a new project. And let me just create any text in here, like the text tool, like say text goes here. 
you just drag that a little bit bigger. And the pretty cool thing is as long as we are keeping this as a text layer, we can do anything to this. So we can also add effects to it. Let's add that lens effect onto it. And let me just create a quick animation here. Something where it kind of pops open. Just make a keyframe for the size. Go a bit further in time. And there we go. The text is there. You know, text goes here. I'm going to go back to Premiere Pro. And as you can see, the text isn't there. The animation, everything is here. But you know, I'd like to change that text. There are different ways we can do that. We can go back into After Effects, but you know, I've already closed After Effects and do not wish to open that again. Well, no worries. Inside your project panel here, just double click on that linked composition so that it's opened up in your source monitor and then head it over to Effects Controls. And look at that. We can just change the text in here. This is always something that you have to do on the source clip. So you can't double click here on the clip in your timeline. So from here, we can just change that text to, to Mr. Awesome which kind of says something about the person here in this shot. Not sure who that is, but it does seem awesome to me. So there we go. The animation, everything that we've created in After Effects is still intact, is still there. Just the text has been changed. It's that simple. Now, if you are running on an older version, you do need to enable that option inside After Effects. And you can do that. I'm just going to go back to After Effects here quickly. Inside your project panel, make sure to right click on your composition of this shot here and go to composition settings. Now somewhere right here, and I believe it was under the advanced tab, you will see use text as template or something. In a newer version, Adobe has removed that and just made it work by default. But I believe somewhere around Creative Cloud 2015 or 2014, I'm not entirely sure, you had to enable that. And if you don't see this option and doesn't work as well, that means you really have an old version and you should either update your After Effects to make that work. So that's just about the workflow from bringing clips back and forward to After Effects and Premiere Pro. You can click here above my head to subscribe to this channel, or you can also click on the video here on my left to learn the very basics of After Effects and get started with that program. Now, thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.